Hey, so we are back another week. This is number four, I believe, and I'm so excited that I've been able to do this the last few weeks. I had made a goal to do this each week, and we're now four episodes into it, and we're going to keep on moving. So we've got some good things to talk about this evening. Uh, to almost midnight, and I am here at the studio, and this is four nights in a row for me because I have had quite the week this week. Uh, Monday... I was working on cookies, some sugar cookies for my uncle, actually. He had ordered some cookies, 150 of them, for University Credit Union and for an event that he was having done in St. George. So I came in on Monday, baked the cookies, uh, mounted all of the logos on fondant, and then on Tuesday I finished up that order, and then he picked them up on Wednesday. So that's what I worked on at the beginning of this week, and the next thing is epic, man. We had such a fun week. Um, so I am working with an amazing guy that I've known for quite a few years, actually. And we've always talked about maybe doing some kind of collaboration or something together, but we just never have. And it is amazing. We're making it happen. So Scott over at San Diablo Churros, they make amazing artisan churros, and they're incredible. So go check out their website. Go follow them on social media. Um, they've got all sorts of amazing things going on. So Scott and I got together just a little while ago, and we were talking about how amazing it would be to take his churros and make them into the body of Baby Yoda from The Mandalorian and have me figure out a way to make a little baby Yoda head to go on the top so that they have the head and then the churros looks like his little cloak that he has on and is it and it is gonna be so cool we I went through a lot of trial and error on this because I wanted you know originally I was thinking that I'd made out make it out of fondant then I was thinking that I'd make it out of modeling chocolate and kind of the bottom line where I came to is I'm like it needs to be something that people will enjoy to eat. Once fondant is hard, once modeling chocolate is hard, it's not the most enjoyable thing to eat. So I wanted to make sure that we made something that was enjoyable. I have this vacuum form machine that I bought back a couple of years ago when I did an airplane cake for Hexel and Airbus. And I invested in this new piece of uh, machinery and it is so cool. You can make molds of pretty much anything that you want. And so what we did is I went to the store and I went through the toy section and I found a little baby Yoda character. This was the toy that I got, this cute little toy. But what I had to do in order to make the mold is I had to take his head off. So I had to cut it apart. And then I had to cut his head apart so that I could put it down in the mold machine and then be able to take my mold, and this still has a little bit of chocolate on it right here from I was just making them, but I have a line here for the popsicle stick and then, or the sucker stick, and then here I have my mold. So I can pour my melted chocolate in here, let it chill, have the stick in there, take it out, and then what we did is we took the little Yoda heads that were the, the melting um, the melting chocolate and then hand painted the eyes on there. And so Scott, this week, was so funny. I met him, met him at lunchtime today and it was just hilarious because, you know, we were going back and forth on text trying to figure out where we were gonna meet to make the Yoda exchange and drop Yoda off to him. So it was really funny. So we met in a Maverick parking lot and we chatted for a little bit, made a couple fun TikTok videos, and then I handed the Yodas off to him and said goodbye to Yoda. Um, so what Scott's gonna do is he's gonna be at the Pinners Conference up in Salt Lake this weekend, and he's gonna be up there um, advertising at his business and also you know serving churros there, but then he's also taking pre-orders for these Yoda heads and then they're gonna be up on his website up until the 13th, and then people can pick them up on the 20th of this month. So taking pre-order, so head over to his website or his social media for more details, because I don't have all the details right now, but head over there for those details. 
And if you don't have an opportunity to take advantage of this, make sure that you follow him and find out where his churros are gonna be because they're incredible, they're amazing. So that was one thing I did this week and we'll update you next week on how that project is going. So that's super fun. Also for the dessert of the week this week, we did pumpkin cheesecake and they're in the oven right now, just finishing up and they're gonna be amazing. So we had, had some people order those and we'll fulfill those tomorrow. And another thing, this week has been really crazy. I have had a lot of things happen this week. Um, I took a couple pretty big leaps of courage this week and I'm probably not gonna go into very much detail right now, but just of something that I've wanted to do for a long time and the opportunity arose and so I um, signed up for something that's gonna be in the future um, and I will have to talk about that in future videos because that's gonna be an exciting, amazing chapter of my life uh, that's going to really help a lot. Um, and it's gonna be really kind of help fulfill a lot of the passions and drive um, and goals that I have. A lot of times we beat ourselves up because we think that something's gonna be so hard and, and sometimes things are hard. Oftentimes things are hard. I've talked about in the past that usually you know, 50% of what we do is amazing and 50% of what we do and experience is not. And that it's very up and down, right? And, but what I've found is that with courage, if you can just take that one step, um, my wife, um, Charlotte, is a wonderful example of this, um, this month. Um, just barely, she was challenged to be a part of a writing um, conference, uh, not writing conference, but a writing challenge. And, I can't remember the name of it. I think it was like Nanu Remu or Nanu something. Um, but the point of this is, is that the challenge was to write a certain number of words per day and to write a novel basically in a month. And so my wife's a writer. And I was super inspired by that. And I like, she she's taken it on and written every single day and taking this on. And that takes some courage to be able to do something like that and just, you know, be like, you know what, I'm going to do it and I'm going to make it happen and it might be uncomfortable, it might not be fun sometimes, but I'm going to make it happen. And that's so awesome. So she, she's working hard on that and that's really, that's really inspired me um, a lot. Um, and then also, you know, taking risks. Um, there's some big risks that you take, especially as a business owner. And the listening to something interesting the other day and when you're starting a business or when you're starting a different venture or having the courage to do something and taking a risk you know taking the risk really is putting yourself out there and just showing yourself that you can do something and if you're afraid afraid if you're afraid of taking risks start out small and start building up with that so that you can build up that courage. And sometimes, some people, risks are not for them. So that's fine. Is I mentioned I was working with Scott at San Diablo Churros, and I want to talk a little bit about um, collaborations um, and working with others and doing you know, co-marketing and working together um, with different places. Because I've had some very mixed experiences with this in the past. And it was interesting because on my Facebook, I saw an article about a cake decorator that posted something about, you know, about influencers and people asking to do collaborations and um, not really getting from it what um, they thought they were going to get from it and just people asking for free stuff um, for collaborations. And, you know, I've stopped um, doing a lot of those. But the thing is that's really interesting and that I've learned is finding the right people to work with that you can make a win-win situation and really sit down and be like, you know what, you can help me with this and I can help you with this and this is how we can actually accomplish something great together that will benefit both of us. And it has been so incredible working with Scott on this event and whether it goes great or not, just being able to um, work with him has been amazing. 
as you're doing collaboration type stuff, just um, try to protect yourself um, so you're not losing a ton of money and you're trying to not bend too much backwards for people, um, for things that they would like to help um, their business grow. Because you have to remember that whether it's a hobby of yours or whether you're trying to run a business, this is your business or your hobby and it costs you money to do that hobby, to do that business, and you need to be able to cover your costs. If you choose to do a collaboration and you choose to just take the loss and not get paid for it and not pay yourself for the time, you know, that's totally up to you. You don't have to do that. But what I would suggest is there's a couple ways you can do it. You can go back to them and say, okay, yeah, I would love to be a part of your collaboration, but I will provide you this wedding cake for your photo shoot, but I need you to cover my costs, to cover my ingredient cost, let's say. And maybe you have that to cover your ingredient cost and then you donate your time um, so that that is discounted, but you're covering your raw costs. And so in the end of the day, you're out your time, but then it could probably be of value um, of what you get from that collaboration. You kind of have to take these case by case basis. And I hope that's a little bit helpful and maybe I should do a more deep dive into this in the future. Um, but I think that's something that I've learned anyway. And I'm excited to look for more of these collaborations um, that are um, not just people asking for free stuff, but wanting to um, work together in a united cause to help grow both businesses or both um, agendas or both, um, not necessarily agendas, but both um, missions or whatever they're trying to do. Um, I think that's very important um, for that um, to take place. I'm sure there's a lot of opinions on this, so please comment below with questions or concerns or like what, what your thoughts are on this. I'd be curious to hear what people's thoughts are on this. I think this is something that I should um, collect responses from people and maybe do a podcast or something on this. It'd be really interesting. I hope you all are having an amazing week. It's almost the weekend. We're into November and we're getting in, into the, a really, really fun season, getting close to Thanksgiving. Um, getting into this month, I've got a lot of really fun things going on. I'll keep talking about those, of course. Um, going into the end of this month and into December, I'll be judging a couple gingerbread house contests here in Utah, and I am so over the moon about that. Um, if you go back in my past a little bit, before cake decorating, actually in the beginning of cake decorating, I entered a gingerbread house competition back in like 2013, 2014, and I entered this competition and I ended up winning $1,000 and getting first place in this competition, which is so funny because at the time, like, I had not ever done a big gingerbread house before in my life. Like, just, uh, thank you all for watching. Those of you that have watched, please comment below if you have any questions. Please like my video, share my video. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. And please come back and check out what's coming next from The Mighty Baker. And Pete here, and we will see you later. Thank you.